Welcome to Choice Classic Radio. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and help keep this show alive by donating at choiceclassicradio.com. For more of your favorite old-time radio shows, join us on our companion podcast, Choice Classic Radio Detectives, where we bring to you tales from the greatest detective shows the golden age of radio had to offer. Murder at midnight. Let go of my arm. I'll give you money. All the money you want. No, Fred, no! You monsters! I'll make you pay for this! Del- midnight. The witching hour when the night is darkest, our fears the strongest. And our strength at its lowest ebb. Midnight, when the graves gape open and death strikes. How? You'll learn the answer in just a minute in Murder's a Lonely Business. Murder at Midnight, unusual stories of terror and mystery by radio's masters of the macabre. This tale, a study of murder in duet, is by William Morwood. Its title, Murder's a Lonely Business. At a cemetery... A burial is taking place. For oh, as much as it has pleased Almighty God of his great mercy to take unto himself the soul of our brother. The two chief mourners, Fred and Grace Tilson, stand beside the open grave. Earth to earth, and as he looks at his wife, ashes, bitter thoughts course to through Fred's mind. Sure and Look at her. Look at her standing there, dabbing her eyes with a handkerchief. Tears. Real tears after what she did. After what she made me do. She doesn't know what sincerity is or love or pity either. She's hard. Hard all the way through. And I never knew. Never even suspected to. Till we killed him. Now. That's the way she acted. I'll never forget it. Never. A nightmare always. How can I go on living with her? How can I ever trust her again? What am I to do? Oh, Lord, I'd give anything for a drink. To think I ever married that sniveling creature. I believe he's really crying. Really sorry. As if he cared a hoop about his Uncle Edward outside of the money he could get out of him. He was ready enough to help put the old man out of the way the other night. Now his nerve is gone. All he can think about is a drink. That's the only time I feel safe with him. When he's drunk. And not always then. The way he's been carrying on lately, Lord knows what he'll say or do next. I'll have to watch him every minute of the time. He's a fool. And for thy mercy, I O our spot. Lord, who livest and reignest with the Father and the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. 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 Goodbye, Uncle Edward. They're throwing dirt on your coffin now. But you won't mind. You're cold and silent now. Very different from the way you were three nights ago. Three nights ago. Was that all it was? Another lifetime, but... Yes, that's right. Driving up to his house in the dark. Letting ourselves in. Uncle Edward! He must be up in his study. I guess so. Servant's night out. Uncle Edward? The door above opened, and Uncle Edward started down the marble staircase. In my mind's eye, instead of Uncle Edward, I could see my friends, a whole crowd filling the room, and myself in a gorgeous gown descending to greet them. A much more fitting picture than the stodgy form of Uncle Edward as he came down toward us. Well, well, this is a surprise. I thought we'd drop in, Uncle Edward. 
It's been a long time. Six weeks to be exact, Fred. How are you, Grace? Wonderful, thanks, Uncle Edward. Well, I'm glad to hear it. You look a little uh, off your feed. Come on into the library. You'll be more comfortable here. Oh, uh, a drink, Fred? Why, uh... Don't be polite. From what I hear, you're rarely seen without one these days. <laughs> you sound as if you'd had spies watching us, Uncle Edward. It's entirely possible. Why? I've certainly been interested in your activities. For instance, I hear you can be found at a gambling house almost every evening, Grace. Oh. Only the fashionable ones, where everybody goes. You've got to keep in the swim nowadays. If you can afford it. You can't. Not on Fred's salary. That's the trouble. Well, frankly, Uncle Edward, that's why we've come here tonight. We're in a jam again. Hmm. Money? What else? And you want me to bail you out, huh? Well, I'll be equally frank with you. This time, I'm not going to do it. Well, just this but I'm you... sorry I've helped you out of messes often enough in the past. Each time, I hoped you'd pull yourself together. Settle down and lead solid, respectable lives. But each time you disappointed me. Now I've given up hoping. Uncle Edward, I promise Too you... Too late, Fred. I can't believe your promises anymore. I've given you and Grace every chance. Now I am washing my hands of you. You can't expect help from me ever again. Now or in the future. Exactly. What does that mean? My lawyer's coming here tomorrow. And I'm going to cut Fred out of my will. Cut him out entirely. Uncle Edward. Every cent I have is to be left to charity. Well, you're not serious. You can't be. It. Well, it's not fair. I'm your only nephew and There's I... There's no use talking, Fred. My mind is made up. <clears throat> now, would you care to discuss the weather? No. I thought you wouldn't, Grace. Come on, Fred. Uh, Uncle Edward, I advise you to change your mind about this. I beg your pardon? Because if you don't, you may live to be sorry. We went outside. Grace was in a white rage. And I was all jumping myself. We walked around the garden paths, trying to get hold of ourselves before we started back to town. You know what this means, don't you, Fred? The end of everything. We'll never be able to get credit once it's known that Uncle Edward's cut us off. Yes, I know. Somehow, some way, we've got to stop him from changing his will. But how? You know there's no use arguing with him. He's as stubborn as a mule. Besides, there's no time left. He's going to do it tomorrow. I know. Unless, of course, something happens to him before that. Such as? He could die. What? Suddenly. Some chance he's as healthy. Grace, what are you thinking of? You know. You're mad. If you want to spend the rest of your life struggling with debts, not able to do anything, I don't. But Fred... Everything's perfect for it. The old man's alone in the house. No one knows we call this evening. No one Stop will. Stop it. I won't listen oh, to you. be a man for once in your life. Everything you want. Money, luxury. For five minutes' work. Yes, but how? The gun. The gun he keeps in the desk in his study. You've seen it? Yes. We'll take the money, valuables, to make it look like a robbery. Well, I... what are you afraid of? The sight of a little blood? Grace, I, I don't know you when you talk like this. You... I know what I'm after for both of us. It's our only chance of a future. Together. Are you coming? I... Yes. All right. Then let's go in. The servants will be coming back. We haven't any time to waste. We went back into the house, climbed the long staircase to Uncle Edward's study. My mouth was dry, my knees were shaking. We reached the landing. Knock on the door. Grace, suppose. It's too late to suppose anything. Knock. Yes? Come in, I was expecting you back. You were? Certainly. I didn't think you let the money go that easily. Not after Grace's threat. What, uh, what do you mean? You should have been a man, Grace. You have a completely ruthless streak in you. You'll stop at nothing to get what you're after. No wonder you've led poor Fred around by the nose so long. Now, look here, Uncle Edward. Sorry to hurt your feelings, Fred, but you must admit it's true. Now, if you two will explain why you came back... We hope to make you change your mind. You should know me better than that. I've said my last word. Not your last, Uncle Edward. What Grace means You is... don't have to explain, Fred. Her interest in my desk explains itself. <laughs> the right-hand drawer, Grace. Were uh, you by any chance looking for this? The, the gun? Yes, I took the precaution of removing it. As I said, I was expecting you back. I, I, I don't know what you're talking about, Uncle Ed, but I, I was only looking for your checkbook. I thought the least that you could do was to help us out of our present difficulties. It's a good story, Grace, but not quite good enough. Now, as it's almost 12, perhaps you'd both be good enough to leave my house permanently. Well, you win, Uncle Edward. 
I suppose we were foolish to think that we could find a soft spot in that stone heart of yours. You were foolish, all right. This way. This reminds me of the old days when Fred and I were first married, when we used to come and visit you. You used to see us to the head of the stairs when it came time to go. Just like this. That was a long time ago. I wish those days could come back. <clears throat> Impossible. Well, good night, Fred, and goodbye. Well, aren't you going to shake hands with your only nephew? Well, since it's for the last time, goodbye, Fred. Hold him, Fred. Hold me, Grace. Get him. No, stop. I'll give you money. All the money you want. Oh, Fred. Oh, you monsters. I'll make you pay for this. Stop. Grace, what? What did we do? What did you make? Get down there, quick! <laughs> There's no pulse. He's on. He's dead. Grace, when did you find him? An accident. The old man tripped on the stairs and broke his back. The money's ours, Fred. Everything we wanted. What's that? What? Grace, you <laughs> oh, you So you think it's yours, do you? Nothing is yours but death. Because you're going to pay. Pay. <laughs> dead man lying at the foot of the stairs and the white-faced couple staring at each other. Did they hear a voice from beyond? Is it possible for the dead to make the living pay for murder at midnight? Here is Grace Tilton to continue our story. It went according to plan. The inquest raised no ugly questions or suspicions. And then after Uncle Edward's funeral, we settled down in the great old mansion. I could have been happy. So happy. Except for Fred. He'd taken to drinking again. Haven't you had enough, Fred? Another little drink won't do me. <clears throat> Excuse You're such an idiot. The way you've been acting ever since... We did in poor Uncle Edward. Don't be afraid to say it, Grace. We're alone now. Why did you give up your job so suddenly? I'm a rich man now. No need to work. But it looks so suspicious. And the way you've let yourself slip. That dirty shirt. You haven't shaved in two days. <laughs> Don't tell me you're ashamed of me. I can't ask anyone to the house. And I had such plans for us. Entertaining parties. Making a name for ourselves. Sorry, that's not my idea of a career. In heaven's name, what is? Drinks. More drinks. Then another one. I won't let you turn into a drunken bum. I won't be disgraced like that. I'll do exactly what I like, and you won't stop me. Don't forget, my love. We share a little secret together. I'm not forgetting. No matter what happens, you're tied to me for the rest of your life. I wouldn't be too sure of that, Fred. If I get a chance at what I want, you won't stand in my way. Nothing will. What did she mean by that? I thought about it, brooded over it, couldn't forget it. Then one evening as we sat together in a nightclub, things became clearer. Did you hear me, Fred? What? I said I wanted a cigarette. Oh, certainly, my love. Here you are. Match? If you can hold it steady enough. Why do you have to get soused every time we go out? A tribute to your intoxicating charm. Oh, don't be so... Oh, well, there's Ronnie. Good old Ronnie. Dowager's delight. Now, if you only look over this way. With that dress you're wearing? You will. Ronnie! Oh, Ronnie! The change that came over. Smile. Sparkling eyes as he came over to our table. Well, hello there. <laughs> <laughs> this is a pleasant surprise, bumping into you again, Filson. Mm. Getting to be a regular routine. The 
theater, the races, everywhere I go with Grace. Yes, we seem to share a lot in common, Fred. Sit down, Ronnie. What do you have to drink? Oh, nothing, thanks. I've had my quota for the evening. Well, I'm glad someone knows when to stop. Maybe Ronnie's got other vices. <laughs> I have, Fred. <laughs> One of them's dancing. Do you mind if I take Grace out on the floor for a turn? Why, ask me. I'm sure Grace will agree to anything you say. Fred, now what kind of a nasty... Oh, come on, Grace. Fred didn't mean anything. Well, see you later, old boy. They danced well together. As I watched them, I remembered the things I'd heard about Ronnie. Of his rich wife who died so conveniently. And the fortune he'd run through. I saw Grace look into his eyes. Her lips moved. The suspicion grew on me till it became a certainty. They were plotting my death. The veins stood out in my forehead. My hands grew cold. But I knew exactly what I had to do. I had to strike first. I had to kill them before they killed me. If only I knew what they were plotting. If only I could hear what they were whispering to each other. Grace, darling, you're so silent. It's Fred. How dare he act that way? Oh, he's a very unpleasant person. Of course, he's under the weather. But that's no excuse. Just means he doesn't give a rap for you. Never has. Well, don't let's talk about him. Right. Music's lovely. Yes. So are you. Ronnie. You dance like an angel. I could hold you in my arms forever. Oh, we're just made for each other. You know that, Grace? Don't you? I'd rather not think about it. But you must. Have you considered what we talked about the other day? It's impossible. Why? I love you more than anything in the world. We have the same tastes and ambitions. We could be a wonderful success together. But... You love me too, don't you? Oh, yes, yes. Well, then what's stopping us? What's so precious about the life of a drunken bum? Fred's my husband. Husband? Do you love him? Even respect him? No. I did feel sorry for him, but not anymore. Not after tonight. I hate him. That's more like it. No, well, then there's nothing to interfere. Except... The danger? Leave that in my hand. You have just one job to do, Grace. And that? Get Fred up to my place in the mountains for a vacation. I guarantee he'll never come back. I don't know if I should have been suspicious. Fred agreed to go up to Ronnie's place with surprising ease. It was almost as if he'd been expecting the invitation. The night we planned to do it, we sat in the living room, just the three of us. Ronnie was playing the piano. I'm afraid I'm awfully rusty. I haven't practiced in weeks. <laughs> it sounds grand to me, Ronnie. Why don't you join him, Grace? I know you're just dying to play with Ronnie. Duet, I mean. Well, that's all we have time for anyway. I promised the Pearsons we wouldn't be late. Oh, that beach picnic. Tell you the truth, I don't feel much like it. But you promised to go, Fred. Do your world of good, old boy. Wonderful night for a swim. You both seem very anxious to get me down to that lake. Why? <laughs> Not at all. I... If you want Grace and me to go alone... All right, I'll come. But I've got to go upstairs for my bathing suit. Wait for me here. Well, hurry it up, old boy. All set, Grace? You know exactly what to do? Well, I think so. You make a great fuss about Fred drinking. That'll be remembered afterwards. I'll take care of him at the raft. Push his head underwater well, and... He'll struggle. He'll call out. Not in the condition he's in. He's as weak as a baby. Be all over in a few minutes. I'll swim back Ronnie. and... Ronnie! Yes? Isn't there some other way? We love each other so much. Can't we just... Run off together? Let's be realistic, darling. We need the money. His money. Love in a cottage isn't our style. I suppose not. Where is he? What's keeping him so long? I'm just as glad. Come on, Grace. I want to make sure there's an extra bottle of whiskey for him in the car. This way, darling. Through here, into the garage. Give me your hand, Ron. Now, darling, everything's going to be all right. Just being with you... Ronnie. Yes? I saw something moving. Where? Over there. Behind the car. A Fred. Hello. Thought I'd hurry things up by coming straight out to the garage. Well, you... You gave us quite a start. Why, Grace? Something on your conscience? Well, the Pearsons will be on our necks if we don't get started soon. Well, in you go. We're off to the races. But just try to pick the winner. <laughs> winding road that led down to the valley. 
I knew just the spot where I had to leave them. From there on, their only companion would be the man with a sickle. Slow down, uh, Ronnie. Huh? I'm not going to the picnic after all. My, my head's splitting. But it's too late to drive you back, Fred. You won't have to. I'll, uh, I'll walk. Just let me out. Uh, very well. But, Ronnie... It's all right, Grace. We don't want Fred to have a miserable time at the picnic when we can settle things so much better this way. Oh, uh, thanks. I hate to run out on you, but I've got my health to think of. Oh, sure. Oh, incidentally, there's a shortcut back to the house uh, through the fence there. I don't see it. Uh, go on ahead. I'll turn the headlights on it. Oh, uh, thanks. Oh, so long. Have a good trip. Where are you going? Fred, look out! Shut up! You killed him. That's what we wanted, isn't it? Not here. Not out here on the road. It'll look like a hit-and-run accident. We'll double back at the bottom of the hill and pretend we came from another direction. Oh, we won't get away with it, Ronnie. It's no use. They'll catch us this time. Snap no. out of it, Grace. <laughs> Sorry. But you've got to get hold of yourself. Yes. Yes, I must. I can't go all to pieces. My hands are trembling. So... Where are you going? Uh, take the wheel. You're going to drive. No. I can't. Now move over. Go on. No. Now drive. Your life depends on it. Both our lives. I started down this steep zigzag road, and slowly, my nerves relaxed. As the car swooped around the curves, I felt a strange acceleration. Easy on these curves, Grace. It's a sheer drop if we go over the cliff. Oh, are you scared now, Ronnie? Well, I want to keep my neck in one piece. You needn't worry. I'm a good driver. Fred always... What's the matter? Nothing. Keep your mind on the road. There's a hairpin bend ahead of here that... Hey, hey, look out. Okay, I see it. I pushed on the brake. The pedal went all the way to the floor, but nothing caught. Nothing. No, Grace. Now, do you know what I was doing there in the garage? I disconnected the brakes. He did it. Fred. The fence, Grace. The he fence. Them. Yes, Grace. I meant to kill you and Ronnie. Oh, we Grace, slow down. Oh, Ronnie, I'll take those. I can't. Slow down. It's too late now. And long, long drop with the rocks. Ronnie. See you soon, Grace. <laughs> you see how it works out, Ray. And you, Grace, you made one little mistake the night you killed me. You thought that company and crime made it easier, but it doesn't. Murder is a low a very lonely business. One body lying crumpled in the middle of the road, and two more in the shattered wreckage of the car at the foot of the cliff. Three people, lonely no longer, as the clock strikes twelve for murder at midnight. Remember to be with us again when death plays host and the clocks strike twelve for... Murder at midnight. The part of Grace was played by Helen Shields. Wendell Holmes was her husband. Carl Emery, her lover. With music by Charles Paul, Murder at Midnight was directed by Anton M. Leader. concludes today's episode. We'd like to thank you and remind you to donate at choiceclassicradio.com. Remember, 
Your donations make episodes like this possible.